you're, been looking forward to this one. You're laughing because you like this match I so like this much. much. So much. Uh, this this match, uh, they look bad, don't yeah, they? When it starts, bad. you <laughs> you, you clicked on it and you thought, oh, what's this going to be? <laughs> uh, I know what it'll turn out. It'll turn out one of them was a... Yeah. And, you know, then Mark gets to talk about that in, in a light-hearted way. Oh, but no, it no. turns out what it is is a little match that turns into a full-blown riot. Yes. This is Spiros Arion versus Colin Joynson, and it went out on World of Sport. Yes. Pete, tell me what you felt. I just loved it because the crowd, like, <laughs> the crowd are just so fuming. Oh, beyond belief. And it is remarkable. So this is a match that takes place in Leicester's De Montfort Hall. Yeah. A traditional sort of, you know, wrestling venue. Right. They will have been seeing the wrestling at least once a week or twice a week for the previous 40 years. Yeah. What they've never seen before <laughs> is Spiros Arion. <laughs> Spiros Arion is, I mean, you look at him and you go, he probably is a guy who, he's called the Iron Greek. He probably is a guy who runs a, a transport cafe. Yeah. And is also <laughs> moonlighting as a wrestler. <laughs> he's been around for a few years and just, he has a bad night here. <laughs> Wrong. This guy, Spiros Arion, one of the most decorated WWF superstars in <laughs> its history. Wow. He is a Greek guy. He had moved to the US in the 60s. And in 1966, after a, you know, a decent international career here, there and everywhere, he debuted in what was then the WWWF, the Worldwide Wrestling Federation. Surprisingly, he was undefeated for 15 months until he lost a tag team match. And then he remained unbeaten for nearly two years as a singles competitor. So he had a number of draws with Gorilla Monsoon. And Gorilla Monsoon is one of the biggest heels in WWWF history. Yeah. So he's at a level that even I, who love wrestling, I was like, who the True. fuck is Spiros Arion? <laughs> You go through his results and it's astonishing. He has one singles loss in two years. He teams with Bruno Sammartino to win the WWF US Tag Team titles, mm. the forerunner to the tag team titles. He then goes to Australia for a short stint and becomes huge because Melbourne, for example, has a very big Greek population and he becomes a sort of like hometown hero. Yeah. Um, he comes back after this short run there where he's on the top of the bill to the WWF, picks up where he left off, wins everything. Um, he, he has a series of draws again with Gorilla Monster soon and he loses once in a year uh, he loses to Killer Kowalski another huge uh, heel um, he then goes back to Australia in 1973 he has an NWA championship match in Australia with Jack Briscoe uh, which goes to a no contest. So again, he's just not losing at any point. <laughs> he tours Japan and then he comes back to the WWF. Uh, and in 18 months into that run, he challenges his former tag team champion and partner, Bruno Sammartino, who is now holding the WWWF championship belt. Yeah. And Spiros Arian basically says, you basically didn't pay attention to our tag team belts because you wanted the world belt. And now I'm going to get my revenge for that. Confident. As always, correct, Mr. Arion? <laughs> you bet, Mr. McMahon. You know something? The belt doesn't make the champion. Nobody, but nobody could give you that belt. Lady Luck gave it to you. And you're going to have a hard time to keep it. But for your fortune, in a few weeks from now, you're going to walk in Madison Square Garden against me. And boy, I'm going to give you the last lesson first. I'm going to beat you. I'm going to out-wrestle you, then after, I'm going to let you down like a dead moose. He has a uh, match in Madison Square Garden with Bruno Sammartino, uh, which sells out. Uh, <laughs> he beats Bruno by disqualification. His first loss uh, comes when he has a Texas death match against Bruno Sammartino for the belt in Madison Square Garden, which is another sellout. And then, in 1975, that is called the match of the year by Pro Wrestling Illustrated. <laughs> His final MSG sellout that he does against Bruno Sammartino is in a Greek death match. And it's broadcast on HBO. <laughs> All of this stuff is so weird when you watch the match where he's in Leicester de Montfort Hall. Yeah. Um, he loses to two people for the rest of his career after this challenge for the belt. He loses to Andre the Giant and Chief J Strongbow. That's it. No one <laughs> what else. A career. Um, what you don't realise is this man for 30 years has been headlining sold out crowds across the world in huge arenas. <laughs> How he's ended up here yeah. is just puzzling. He has another NWA Championship match with Jack Briscoe in Canada and he beats him by disqualification. So that means every time he's gone for the NWA 
NWA belt, he has gone to a no contest or he's won by DQ. Yeah. Nobody has that record. <laughs> Nobody has that record. He starts having matches against Dusty Rhodes, who was at the height of his popularity in about 1976-7 in Madison Square Garden. And again, Dusty cannot beat him. They go to time limit draws or, you know, he wins by count out. He then goes, starts having matches against the new champion, Bob Backlund. And again, <laughs> he's losing mainly by count out or there's time limit draws or no contest. The guy never loses. Um, he goes to a draw with Mil Mascaris, who at that time is the most famous masked wrestler in the world and mm. is famous for refusing to lose matches. For some reason, Spiros Arion manages to get everyone to agree that he goes to a draw with Mil Mascaris. <laughs> it's so bizarre because Arion is never talked about. And yeah. seeing this match, I was like, they mentioned he once went to uh, Madison Square Garden to, for a match against Bruno San Martino. <laughs> and I thought, oh, bullshit. That's exactly the sort of thing you say when you you're tell, a British. Yeah, because no one booked. could check yeah, back yeah, yeah, then. Yeah, yeah. No one could check. Absolutely true. Yo, you look like Ian McShane. I'm laughing at this. Yeah. In 1978, in his last year in the WWE, he is having matches against Bob Backlund and a fan is so enraged by Spiros Arian that he stabs him in the chest uh, as he's walking to the ring. Fuck me. So the guy has nuclear heat. Yeah. In 400 matches in the WWE, <laughs> I counted that he'd lost around 10 times. <laughs> it just, it doesn't make any sense at all. So having Having been used to riling up the Madison Square Garden crowd to the point that they stab him in the chest, <laughs> he is in a tiny hall <laughs> with a load of British people and not enough security. <laughs> security has never been needed at a British wrestling show before <laughs> until Spiros Arian gets there. Well, not not one individual. The biggest thrill in this game I get is when I wrestle Fatman. Yeah, Fatman. Gorilla Mansoon. Haystacks Calhoun, John Maldon, and all those chubby guys like him. You feel the meat when you grab them. When you punch them in the face, you hear the crack of the meat, the splash, the blood. (laughs) He comes in and he gets on the mic and does the sort of promo that you would not imagine would make a crowd furious. So he comes in and he says, um, Mother Nature has been good to me. Uh, she gave me no room for improvement. <laughs> Two months in the country, I've never found a single Englishman who can give me a hard time. That guy there, he's a great wrestler. He's one of the greatest that you have in England. I'm predicting, and I'm telling you, he's not going to last three rounds. And to be more specific... Two rounds, he says. <laughs> the guy he's facing is Colin Joynton. And Colin Joynton... It's Colin Joynton. It's Colin Joynton. Colin Joynton's coming... Oh, Joynton's coming out soon, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's from Stockport. Um, he's a little guy who um, was one of the first people to be nicknamed the British Bulldog. He also was called in Germany when he performed there the Pocket Tank. Because he's 5'7 and, and quite a stout boy. Mm. Um, what is incredible about it is... Colin Johnson does nothing in this match apart from get beaten up. (laughs) Spiros Arian does very little. Spiros Arian is not a British wrestler. He does not have the technical know-how. He is used to that WWF American style which is kicking and punching. Yeah. And the problem is in a British ring kicks and punches are illegal. (laughs) So they brought Spiros Arian over and he actually can't do anything. (laughs) I didn't know that. You know how to punch a kick. No, no. It's it's supposed to be that beautiful art form and you know kicking punching is on the same as eye gouging and stuff. That's street fighting. Right. Save that for the pub um, <laughs> up come the football scores before the match even starts they wobble up <laughs> like a sort of wonky ghost QPR 3 Charlton nil, and Dundee United 6 Hamilton 2 um, there are a couple of punches there's a kick on the floor there's a choke people don't like it because they go hang on this is cheating mm. this isn't you, this isn't wrestling this guy is cheating he's breaking the rules and I don't think Spiros Arian's aware of that <laughs> Kent well. Walton says that sort of move used over here can get you sent back to the dressing room very quickly <laughs> he says um Spiros Arian is kicking away and after a few minutes he throws Colin Joynton over the top rope. Again, that's not a professional thing to do, right. you know, to the crowd. The mm. crowd will be like, this guy is taking advantage. <laughs> and as soon as Colin Joynton lands on the floor, there are three blokes who just appear <laughs> and stand round him, almost like with their hands in their pockets looking down at him. And I imagine all three of them went, you want to mate? One hand, you know, you need a bit of backup, mate, like that. Um, 
the jeers start. The people begin getting a bit noisy. And so Colin Joynson thrown out again. More men surround him. And then another man appears at the back, sort of against the ring. Is that the point where um, Spiros tries to kick someone in the crowd? That's when another bloke runs out and he kicks the ropes. <laughs> Spiros Aaron kicks the ropes, like, get back. And then he's like, "This is this getting a bit tasty, <laughs> Spiros Aaron?" And Spiros Aaron goes... If it is getting tasty, I want it tastier. (laughs) He gets the turnbuckle pad. He undoes the turnbuckle pad and slams Colin Joynton's face into the exposed metal. (laughs) And I mean, suddenly the whole crowd are on their feet. (laughs) They are up and they are shouting. This just doesn't work over here. You'll just have to realise that this does not work in this country. I think all the referee can possibly do is disqualify him. There's loads of angry arm waving. <laughs> People are really sort of going, you know, no, no, no. but it's not like three or four. No. It's like 40 or 50. <laughs> now, whatever angle the camera cuts to, whatever shot they take, there's always loads of people milling around in the yeah. background, getting closer and closer. And, and some, some of them are just kind of like, there's one bloke with a tash who's laughing, who's dressed in like bell bottoms, and you're like, he's kind of enjoying it, but you yeah. know he'd stick a boot in. Oh, if completely. And, and suddenly, without any warning, they're swarming the ring. <laughs> <laughs> and they've got a funny thing of just going, I don't know whether I'm allowed to go in the ring, but I'm my body's pushing me and it's I'm really pulling weird. back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It really is strange. Arion just starts kicking at the ropes. <laughs> And I think that's two things. One, that is a wrestler reminding people yeah. that if you keep going, I will do this Kick to you. Yeah. And I've got height advantage because yeah. I'm in the ring. But the other thing is, it just riles people up more. <laughs> the boom, and they're going back and then they're going, come on, come on. Um, there is a fucking brilliant bit where suddenly a shoe is thrown. <laughs> it sails through the ropes yeah. and another bloke on the other side catches it. Catches it beautifully as Arian well. Arian yeah. turns round and sort of spins around looking for the shoe. And as he turns around fully, the bloke lobs it into his back. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just everything is going a bit tense. There are blokes pulling their jackets off. Yeah, like just, they're going to start fighting. This is all going mad. Suddenly, Max Crabtree, who's the promoter, is in the ring. And they're sort of going, OK, Spiros Arian is being disqualified. That's, that's the thing, <laughs> because the he's done all this. Out, it's yeah. the only way he could get out of this. Mayhem all over the place. Ladies and gentlemen, the referee, a solution, but to stop the contest, and disqualify the Iron Greek. When he's in the ring, there's a bloke. He's got the most 70s look. He's got a feather cut hairdo. <laughs> he's got a brown sleeveless knitted v neck and a bright mustard yellow shirt. Beautiful. And he has got on and they've pulled him back and his legs are going and he's fighting and they're just, everything is breaking down. You suddenly <laughs> realise that all the security there are men in their like 70s and 80s <laughs> yes. who have basically served in the war and are now like theatre wardens. <laughs> it's just amazing. There's a guy who suddenly gets up on the near side of the ring wearing a red leather jacket. It, and Colin Joynton just punches him. Yeah. He goes, boom. Yeah. And suddenly you've gone, the wrestlers are now, like there is a sanctity about the ring. Yeah. You know, but the- suddenly the wrestlers are like, we've got to work together here. <laughs> you know, this is going bad. What they choose to do, and it is entirely the right decision, is suddenly Big Daddy is coming out. Look, if I think anything, <laughs> I just think I just love the fact that he's back there going, Big Daddy, can you just calm everyone uh, down, please? Well, I mean, I mean, credit to Spiros Arian. <laughs> Spiros Arian has done exactly what he's supposed to do, and that is he is supposed to be a bad guy, and he's supposed to wind up a crowd and get heat. He has done that. By the time they've gone, he's disqualified, and before Big Daddy comes out, Max Crabtree's like, he's disqualified, and Spiros Arian grabs the mic, and you're like, Spiros, mate. Spiros, don't do it. Got to stop this, mate. I didn't this know is, you guys yeah. were pre-menstrual. <laughs> <laughs> you what, mate? You fucking what? <laughs> oh, oh my! No. It's absolutely magic. Yeah, it, it, it's wonderful. It's, it really it's is. just great. The best thing about it is, as this is all going off, Spiros Arian suddenly has the shoe again, and he lobs it right at the man who <laughs> threw it at him about fifty seconds before. <laughs> and in the melee, he's like, "Commit this guy's face to memory." <laughs> 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 he doesn't throw it like, "Hey, I'm loving." About the thing, he finds the person he and does. he really fucking throws he it hard. Whips it, wangs it. Oh, you're gonna throw a shoe, you'll get shoe straight back at you. <laughs> <laughs> out comes Big Daddy, points at Arian, and Spiros Arian is like, Yes, this makes sense. This yeah. is a good out. Yeah, um, the two of them will never have a match, <laughs> no. they never have a match. There's no question of them having a match. It's just like, Get daddy out, people will listen <laughs> yeah, to daddy. daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, as as he comes out the ring, the crowd just swarm <laughs> Spiros Arian. They just are on him. And Probably Kent, expected another stabbing. Yeah, well, Kent Walton just suddenly, you know, he says, um, he goes, there he goes, breaking a chair and taking it with him on the way back. And it's like, I bet he fucking <laughs> I did. I bet he fucking did, That yeah. 
yeah. to me is a proper you have heard the stories in Madison Square Garden when the crowd rioted and the wrestlers are in the thing and they break the chairs and they are just like if you come near me this is this going is through your eye yeah, yeah, yeah. Spiris Arion <laughs> bringing that to the Leicester de Montfort Hall, <laughs> smashing a chair and just like, you want these? You know, just, oh, I think that's on the thrilling. Bluetons there. <laughs> i tell you one thing. I tell you one thing, Bobby Buckland. May God have mercy on your soul because I ain't going to show none. I never show pity to my opponents. When they down, I kick them. When they put for mercy, I kick them. When they bleed, I punch them where they bleed. And when they hurt, I try to pulverize them and cripple them. So you know what to expect.